Back on this Sunday morning, you're looking at a balance of power graphic here in the Tennessee Senate, and you see how it breaks down for the legislature. This is what's known as a supermajority for Republicans. Dennis, it means the Democrats wouldn't even have to show up and uh, the Senate could get business done. So as a, a good Democrat, why don't you fire away with the lieutenant governor here? Well, I just have a question of why taxpayer dollars are being used to fund private educational institutions. Why? My kids have all gone to parochial schools. I've paid for it. I would ask all of the people on this panel if they went to a, a private school or went to public education. And what's going to be the long-term effect if the money continuously gets drawn out and going to... And we have a lot of academies in Knox County. Uh, mm -hmm. In case you hadn't noticed, there's a lot of them, and they change names quite frequently. So what is the benefit to the student uh, to have this program? I mean, is it if you want your kid to go to a, to a Catholic school or uh, whatever, why don't you just pay for it? Well, the taxpayers are already paying for education, and this would not impact the funds that are, that are elect allocated through the BEP, uh, which is our funding formula for education. This would be separate and apart for that. And I, I think it's really the parents' choice as to where they send their, their child and if they can get a better education, if the parents feel more, uh, uh, I guess more, think more highly of one certain school over another, they should be able to make that decision. Well, the great state of Tennessee has always been historically in the bottom five for spending on education. So is this going to create more money for education, less money, or the same? Well, it, it, it will, the amount of money we spend on education, and in the last few years we've done a whole lot as far as teacher's salary and other things that we spend through the BEP. And we put a put a great e emphasis on education. This simply gives the public, uh, the parents in Tennessee, a, a choice. Staying on this, how, excuse me. How do you factor? Excuse me, Susan. How do you factor <laughs> in? Uh, how do you factor homeschooling? Who pays for that? If you want your kid that, not to go to a, a parochial school or a public school and you homeschool, do they get a stipend for that? No, they would not. They, that would and be all be, would be on their dime. Right, okay. and that's because the parents choose not to participate with the government in any types of regulation or any type of testing or anything like that. And you know, Dennis brings up an, an argument that I hear a lot about, what about the schools, what about this? The question really ought to be is, if you're opposed to parents having a choice for students to have a better option, why do you want to keep those kids in a failing school? Um, because why you're do you denying have them. Schools? That's well, my question. It goes back to long-term uh, problems throughout the the community, throughout the uh, family history. Uh, but there's not any significant change. When when I served in the legislature, we had one school in Shelby County that the uh, student who had was the valedictorian got a 14 on the ACT. That was the valedictorian. We are just allowing students to continue to fail and pass them through, whereas we could be giving families an opportunity to have a better choice so that their kids have a better opportunity at a better life. So are we blaming the kid because he, got, he or she got a 14 on the ACT? I blame the system because that kid was stuck in a failing school because they had to go to the school that their zip code demanded they go to. And how long ago was that, please? That was 10 years ago. I do want to follow up, um, and it's related to vouchers as well, on this question of accountability. As you probably saw, uh, a version apparently of the legislation got posted or was mm -hmm. accidentally slipped out last week. And uh, a lot of people uh, looked at it very quickly, and one thing they noticed, the critics, was no accountability in terms of, okay, so we, we pay for the children to go have this private education, if you will, but there's no accountability in terms of the testing or measuring progress and that kind of a thing. I wonder if that's something that's on your mind or if you see a way that that can be addressed. Well, I think it will be as the, as the bill goes through the, through the House and the Senate. I think there will be some accountability measures that are put in it, just that there are accountability measures in, in current schools. 
Speaker Sexton also was on a couple weeks ago. We talked about this, and I asked him the question because there is the impression out there in some folks' minds that parents are just going to get a check, if you will, that you know, eight or nine thousand dollars, seven thousand dollars that will be for the education for their kid. My understanding, and according to what Cameron Sexton says, is, oh no, that's going to go straight to the educational institution, and there'll be sort of a priority of how it gets spent. Is that your understanding as well? Uh, yes, and I've. The bill that was put out there yeah. and, and was and was filed was really kind of a broad brush at, at what they were looking at. We've got a bill filing deadline coming up on on the fifth in the Senate, and I believe the House is a little earlier. Mm -hmm. So you'll see the the uh, more of the meat and potatoes in the. In, in the version that gets introduced, but then still it, in the House it'll go through a number of committees. Uh, in the Senate it'll go through uh, education and and finance will probably be the two. We've spent a lot it of time. Will be the two. Those will be the two, yes. So we spent a lot of time on this issue because it is going to dominate the discussion, the points that both Eddie and Dennis were making on this, and that's why we spent some time on it. Uh, but, Lieutenant Governor, um, aside from the, the, the school choice and voucher question, and aside from balancing the budget, which you are constitutionally mandated to do, mm -hmm. what other issue do you think will dominate the discussion in the legislature this session? Well, you say balancing the budget. It's I always refer to it as structurally balancing the budget. Mm -hmm. You know, in 2000, 2001, we played some games. Mm -hmm. We upped the revenue estimates and we got caught. We lost, our, you know, our AAA bond rating. But uh, I think how we address uh, crime and safety for the communities is very high on my priority list and certainly is with uh, Speaker Sexton. Okay. Uh, we've uh, we know we have some real tough problems to address in particularly some of the urban areas, uh, and part of it is is due to you know the family structure. Part of it's due to drugs, uh, but it, it it's really hurt uh, the fabric of Tennessee, and and uh, although we we can't you know solve it overnight, we're certainly going to work on it this session. Well, we'll talk more in detail about that in, in the coming discussion. I think we want to dig into that. We're going to have to take a quick break on Inside Tennessee, but back with more of Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally of Oak Ridge right after this.